This morning, I'm going to talk to you, and I know that over the years, we've talked about this, but it never is the same. Never, never, never. And we are here. The purpose of this church is transformation. Transformation, which means change, which means growth. Now, when you are growing, we use this term growing pains. Now, I remember when I was... Um, uh, just a little boy, and I loved playing cowboys and Indians, and uh, my cousins, we would we would go down, uh, we'd just do all kinds of stuff, you know. And uh, so when I began to be about 12 or 13 years old, I remember that all my people around me, they were real, they wanted, they couldn't wait to get 16 so they could get a car, so they could start driving. Me, personally, at those couple of years in my life, I didn't want to grow up. I didn't want to change. I liked being a kid. I mean, when you're a child, you don't have a whole lot of responsibility, do you? There's not a whole lot expected of you. Amen? And so uh, I, I never did. I didn't want to grow. There's many, many Christians today that do not want to grow. Why? Because of the responsibility Amen. Uh, because of the change. Mm -hmm. uh, because even the change, n not just inwardly, but when you grow and you change, many you're going to change company. Not everybody is going where you're going. Amen. And so uh, it's all about transformation. And you can't do a whole lot. When I was 12 years old, I couldn't drive a car. Well, uh, and now... <laughs> I've got ki uh, ki grandkids that could, but uh, at 12 years old, I couldn't drive a car. I didn't have anybody to teach me how to drive a car. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I didn't have that responsibility, okay? Uh, I didn't have the responsibility of keeping the car up, of taking care of the car, to keeping the oil changed, amen, and all those things, keeping it insured, and all those things that go along with it and what I'm saying this morning as long as you're a child as long as you're a baby Christian that you are going to be very very limited as to what you can do and how you can add to the kingdom of God so we have to change we have to grow and what I want to talk about this morning and I'll try to be as brief as possible um, I remember at the beginning when I first began to listen to Brother Copeland and some of those faith teachers, man, they would teach like an hour, hour and a half, you know. And um, so uh, I remember uh, Brother John Osteen, uh, not Joel, but his daddy, John. And he came to, uh, to our school, and in the pastor's class, he came in uh, because he was a pastor of pastors. And so he would come in and minister to us. And he told us, you know, because Copeland and them had said something about, you know, ministering so long and how that so uh, you can't say but so much in a short time but brother john osteen he said uh you know if you're talking about uh preaching an hour he said nobody's that good uh, <laughs> and 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 so he uh because he had about 30 or 40 minute messages that was that was his thing amen but he said nobody's good enough to teach an hour okay so i'm trying to follow that Spiritual maturity, maturity is a state of being fully developed. It means complete. It means perfected. A lot of times in the scripture where you read the word perfected, per perfected, it's not talking about being flawless, but it's talking about being mature. Even mature Christians are not perfect. Amen. So I want to just give you some scriptures real quickly. To, to, to show us first that God wants us to grow. He wants us to change. It's his will, it's his plan, and it's his purpose for our life. In Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Now see, w w what we do a lot of times is we look at people and we think they're spiritual. Well, it, it, and sometimes you may be right, but a lot of times you're wrong because you can't ident identify them. Mm-hmm. How many knows that somebody can uh, act one way but not but not really be that way? Yeah. Amen. So it's uh, maturity is a state of being fully developed. 
complete and perfected. In Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, it said, And God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, that is, the maturing and developing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect, that is, a mature a man, uh, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. In other words, a perfect man or a mature person is one who comes to a place of fullness of Christ. Well, what's he talking about? Well, every one of us have Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. And Christ is in us for a purpose. Uh, Christ means the anointed one. And so you have an anointing when you're born again. You have an anointing on the inside of your spirit. And the anointing is to bring you to the fullness of Christ. That is to the fullness of everything God purposed and planned for you to be. And here again, not everybody's seeking not, not. A lot of people don't change. They don't want to change. They don't even know they need to. And, the, and a lot of ministers are not ministering that to them. Amen. There's a lot of good preachers. I listen to them from time to time. There's good preachers, and they'll tell you, you, sh you know, what is and what is not, but they don't tell you how. Right. Right. Amen. He said that you henceforth be no more children, right. okay, tossed into a fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. Little kid, little baby Christians will get carried away with all kinds of things. Yeah. You remember a few years ago, it was about the gold dust. Amen. You remember the, 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 when, when the people were growling like, you know, lions and barking like dogs and uh, crowing like roosters and all that kind of stuff. Well, that was, that was, that was those, those people were, were following a wind of doctrine. Amen. So he said, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. There's men out there, men and women, that are lying in wait to deceive you. And that's what we want to do today, is we want to help you not to be deceived by thinking spirituality or maturity is one thing when it's not the other. Okay. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him, grow up, grow up in him in all things, which is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase in the body by the edifying of itself in love. So can you see from that very scripture there that God is after, and that's the reason he gave us these gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, to help you. And the reason I'm up here is because he's anointed me, the grace that's on me is to teach you. Amen. Now in Hebrews 5, 13 and 14, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful. Well, who drinks milk? Babies. Unskillful in the word of righteousness. So if you're a baby, you're unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. But strong meat belongeth unto them that are full age, or the perfected, even those who by reason of use of their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. The more you grow, the more you understand the difference between good and evil because there's a whole lot of things that look good that they are teaching you, that they are telling you on the news, on media, and from the, from the White House and from Congress, amen, uh, and, and they're, they're deceived, amen. Um, but if we, if we eat meat, that means we mature. And we don't fall for this crazy stuff. 1 Corinthians 2, 6, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, that is, those that are complete or mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. James 1, 2 through 5, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience work, have her perfect work that ye may be perfect or mature or complete. Amen. Perfect and entire, wanting that is lacking nothing. Amen. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally 
and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. So there's no excuses to be there's no excuse to be stupid, is there? Amen. The word says, you know, the word says, if you ask, he'll give. Amen. And wisdom is his will. Amen. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know the petitions which we ask. Okay. Colossians 1, 28. Whom we preach, Paul is speaking here, warning every man. Warning. See, we need a warning. Somebody needs to warn us. And teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect or mature or complete in Christ. Amen. All right, so I just wanted to read those scriptures to help you see that it is God's perfect will. As a matter of fact, let's go on Hebrews 6, 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to maturity or perfection, completeness, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. You know, you can't preach, you can't preach um, uh, repentance all the time. That we need to repent. That means to have a change of mind. But there's certain things you just can't, that we, we know that's been established. And we just can't t keep preaching the same thing over and over and over and over. He wants us to go on to another level of revelation knowledge. And I sit there sometimes. I'm not being critical. I'm just observing. And I'm listening to, especially the faith people, and I'm listening to them, and they're saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. That it's God's will for this, 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 this. Amen. Okay, but help me. Help me grow. Help me change. Amen. Tell me something that's going to help me to fulfill the will of God in my life. Romans 8, 29 says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of Christ. That would be maturity or perfection, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, let's talk about what a, a spiritual person is not or spirituality is not. Now, see, I've been doing this for 50 years. When you do something for 50 years, you automatically learn some things. You know some things about people because you've been doing with, doing, dealing with them for 50 years. But also, we need to mention this. In 50 years, you can make a lot of mistakes. Amen. And I, 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 Andy is in training. And uh, I'm teaching him a lot of things that I did that didn't work. Uh, some things I see in him that I don't like. Amen. And the reason I don't like it is because I made the mistake and he's just following in my footsteps, but he doesn't need to follow me in everything. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If you're not careful, if you're following somebody too closely, you'll follow them in their mistakes and their failures as well. Amen. Now, what is, what, what, what spiritual maturity is not? And here again, this is not a criticism, but these are the kind of people that I have known and met and been in relationship with and, and, and all, in, my, in these years. And people fall into pretty much several different categories. Um, someone I met here recently. And uh, that, that, see, the, the Bible says, uh, uh, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And basically, what they were saying was how spiritual they were. And how great they were. Uh, and, I, and I immediately categorized them. And I realized that um, they're legends in their own mind. <laughs> they're deceived. And that they wouldn't fit here. Because we're not spiritual enough for them. We don't have enough knowledge, enough revelation, enough anything. Now, you've got to understand this person that knows everything has never built anything. Hello? Now, this one, uh, and I've got to four people here. The first one was a person who went around praying in tongues over everybody they met. And pr praying in tongues and prophesying. Now, you look at that person, and there was a whole lot of people 
that saw them as spiritual. This is spiritual if you go around praying for everybody, prophesying over them, speaking in tongues. But here's the thing. I was close enough to them that I saw some bad, ugly stuff in them. See, just because you can operate in the gifts of the Spirit does not mean you are mature. Look at, the, look at 1 Corinthians, the book of 1 Corinthians. These guys were gifted. They had all kind of gifts in the church, but they were babies. That's right. Now, Paul had to call them. He was trying to correct them. Amen. Because, see, here's the thing. I, I, you see it all the time. You can see ministers that are great ministries. Some of them I've seen just, fix, you know, they're affecting the millions of people. But then they find out it's revealed that they're very deficient in character. And so eventually they fall, and all of a sudden the people that they had influenced so much now they can't, they can't influence them anymore. Now they can't help them anymore. Not because they're not still anointed and do, still have the gifting, but they don't have the character. And when you don't have the character, eventually, eventually, go back and study. Study the people in the church. Study the, the last hundred years of, of ministers who shook the world, and you'll find out. Mm -hmm. David was a mighty man of God, a man after God's own heart, but he sure messed up big time. Amen. So just because this person went around acting spiritual and looking spiritual is not according to your giftings. It's according to your character. And I saw in this person that they weren't walking in love. As a matter of fact, they turned against me there for, for nothing, you know, because I wouldn't accept their prophecies and some of the things they were saying. The next person that I knew was a person that was always uh, helping people, going to the hospitals, going to the funerals, going to the, you know, uh, always going and seeing people and trying to help them. And that looks good. That looks like a very spiritual and mature person. And this, this, this the friend of mine uh, from years ago, I ran into him down at Deals a few months ago, and he said, didn't so-and-so used to go to your, my, your church? I said, yeah. But I knew he went to this church. And I said, I, aren't they over there with y'all now? He said, no, they've gone. But he said, those sure are good people. And I'm thinking, yeah, they may be good people, but they tried to destroy me and this church. They may be good. See, just because you do good to people doesn't mean that you're walking in love Amen. And that you're a person of character. There was another brother that I, that I knew. And uh, he, was, uh, he could quote scripture coming and going. And to present himself the way he presented himself, you would think this man is the most spiritual thing you ever seen. But I was close enough to see him act like a pure baby. There was a contention. Instead of let's sit down and talk about this, let's investigate, let's communicate. No, you just fly off and go, you know, act like a baby. Hello. Break fellowship. Amen. Don't try to work out anything, you know, for the sake of unity and for the sake of working together for the unity. No, uh, they, they were still babies. Are, are y'all doing all right out there? The next person is the person that believes part of the word, but not all of it. I know I've seen this. People pick and choose which scriptures they, they want to believe in. But let me tell you this. If you don't believe that this is the word of God, and if you think that it's full of contradictions, it's not. It's just that you don't understand what he's saying and who he's saying it to and what's he talking about. Amen. This is God's word. And it's, 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 it's just as much word in Deuteronomy as it is in Mark 11. But see, people want Mark 11, but they don't want those scriptures that talk about transgender and, 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 and 
uh, uh, homosexuality. See, th th that part we're going to leave out because they can't help it. They're born that way. Uh -huh. Well, see, you just denied the Word of God. All right, let me ask you this. If you deny the Word of God, part of it, any part of it, where does that end? I mean, if part of it's wrong, the whole thing could be wrong. Amen. So we pick out, and we, when we study the Bible then, we don't, we don't believe what we read. We read what we already believe because we've already been trained in that area. I remember the, the, the chapter, Romans chapter 7, is one of the most understood scriptures or, or chapters in the whole Bible. He was what he's talking about. It took me years. It took him years. I hear ministers, if I call their name, you say, duh. That don't understand that, and they misrepresent it, and they, they teach it wrong. Mm -hmm. Because it says things like this, that which I would do, I can't. And the things I wouldn't, uh, could do, I, I, I want to do, I can't. And the things that I can't do, I do. That sounds like you can't live right. That sounds like an excuse for sin. And that's not what he's talking about at all. And for Logan to read through it one time and get the revelation, that's, that's, that's off the chain, friend. Amen. Because I sure couldn't do it. Why? Because I've been taught differently. Once you've been taught a certain thing, it's hard to read the Bible and not see that in there. So you're not seeing the truth. You're seeing what religion has already taught you. Okay. So a person that is going to grow and mature and develop, they have to have a hunger. They have to have a hunger for truth and be willing, willing to change. And sometimes change, when you're having, when you're having to grow, hello, yeah. there's growing pains involved. A growing person in the Lord, a mature Christian, is putting the truth forth and not religion. Now here's what you've got to understand. The devil, Mark chapter 4, the devil is after one thing primarily in your life. He is after the Word. He is after the Word of God. He wants to either take it and misrepresent it through religion, amen, or he wants you to be at a place that you can't believe it because you compare it to yourself, you compare it to other people, like Obama said, you have to read the Bible. You have to be. You you, you have to have some reason. In other words, uh, you can't go back to the Old Testament. You got to read the Bible with reason. In other words, not faith. You don't reason out the Word of God. You, you accept it by faith. I said, because there's a lot of things that don't make sense in in this Word to us, because we don't understand it. So it doesn't make any difference, uh, the, the, your teaching, to memorize the Word, to read the Word, uh, making the Word fit your religion or what you already believe. Are we doing all right yet? All right. Now, two things that I, tell, I was telling Lindsay the other day, two things that has to go along with maturity. Number one, you have to be able and willing to accept responsibility. You've got to take responsibility for your words, for your actions. If that's true, then you don't pass the buck. You don't make excuses as to why I'm this way. See, the only person that can stop you is you. I don't care what was done to you. I don't care if you were molested, if you were beaten. I don't care what you went through. And I know a lot of people went through hell as well as myself. Okay? All kinds of things. Okay? That I didn't ask for and I didn't, uh, it wasn't my fault. 
okay? But you got to understand that passing the buck or making excuses came from the very beginning. And I won't read, if you want to read Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 13, I won't read all of that. But I will tell you this. God said, don't eat of this tree of the knowledge of evil. If you do, if you do, dying you shall die. You're going to die spiritually and you're going to die physically. Amen. But then the serpent came along, deceived Eve, and told her, that uh, if she would eat, see what the devil's after. He was after the word. Amen. Did the Lord, did, didn't the Lord say not even touch it? That's not what he said. He said, don't eat of it. So what he's doing is he is giving her another word to take away the, root, the word that God said to him. And so God comes to the garden like he always does to fellowship with Adam. But Adam's not there. Adam's moved into spiritual darkness or spiritual death, so there can be no fellowship. And uh, he said, you know, I taught on this before, Adam, where art thou? Okay. And he said, I, and, and Adam said, well, I heard you coming, and I, I, I was naked and afraid. Well, who told you you were naked? Have you ate of the tree? Well, what did he say? What did he say? He said, Lord, it's this woman who gave me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is it that, that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. Both of them are giving excuses. Yeah. Amen. Adam is passing the buck. He said, what's what he said? He said it was this woman. It was her, her, it's her fault, but you the one that gave her to me. Yeah. So basically, it's her fault, and it's your fault, but it's not my fault. Amen. So re responsibility. You can't mature uh, without responsibility. And the next thing is you have to be able to receive correction. As a matter of fact, a person that's really hungry and wants to grow, they want correction. But that's few and far between. I don't know how many people over the years have come to me and said, now, if you see anything in my life, you tell me I, 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 I want to grow, I want to change. And, you know, I, I, let me know what I'm doing wrong. You know, I was dumb enough to believe that. Because I tried it. It didn't work. Because they they're not going to submit. Now, see, correction has to come from authority. Uh, correction only comes when you give somebody the right to correct you. Not everybody has the right to correct you. And you sure don't have the right to go around correcting other people. Now, a good example of this is Jake. He said, he, you know, he's got two little brothers. Okay. And he's always trying to correct them. He'll run and tell me, John Paul's doing this. I told him, I, you can hear him. He's getting on to John Paul. He's getting on because he thinks it's his place to correct them. It's not his place. So we're trying to train him out of that. No, if, if there's correction that needs to be, then it has to come from mama, daddy, or papa. Amen. Did you get that? Somebody put on, the, on the Facebook after the great uh, exodus that, uh, speaking to me actually, uh, that uh, uh, I wouldn't receive correction like David, like David, correct, because I say correction's got to come from up here, not down here. So, so he was saying that I wouldn't receive correction like David did. Uh, but what he didn't understand was that the prophet the prophet had a higher level of authority than the king. He had the right and he had the authority to, to confront and to correct David. Amen. Uh, if, you want, if you can't receive correction, what you're basically saying is, and I've had people tell me, uh, that means that you're already perfect. There's no place to grow to. I could call names. You would it would blow your mind, so I can't do that. 
But a growing Christian, one that really wants to be corrected, even though it's painful, okay? It's uh, when you won't receive correction, you mean, and that's pride. Yeah, because I already know. Now, see, um, with Andy, and so far, he has received the correction, but I've been uh, training him, and I've corrected him uh, several times, and I've got some more. Uh, yeah, but he 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 wants me to he wants me to 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 tell him to show him. Well, you know, I didn't have a spiritual father to do that. Many of you didn't either. Amen. So he doesn't have to make the same mistakes. Like I said, in 50 years, I can make, you can make a lot of mistakes in 50 years. But, I mean, you can do a lot of things right. Hello? But I want him to learn from my mistakes just like he did with, with the things that I, I did right. Hello out there. So then the second thing is, is we have to, a, a mature Christian has to be able to discipline their speech. They have to, they have to speak when they, when they should, and keep their mouth shut when they shouldn't. Hello, some was it scripture? Is this just what somebody said? You know, it's uh, you can talk and you can say things, and people will think you're a fool, or or if you you know if you if you, if excuse me if you're silent if you don't say anything, people just think you are a fool. You don't know anything. But if if you open your mouth, then all doubt is removed. And again, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You can pick up on what's in a person by what they say. Amen. Here's something. Now, this is something that plagues, especially. As, now, it, it, and I guess the reason I say especially because this is what I've been in all my life and familiar with. Uh, but one thing, and everywhere I go, when I went to Ramah, when I go, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, this is, this is what happens. I find people gossiping. Talking about other people and their weaknesses and their failures. That means that you're walking in pride. You're acting like you're, you're gossiping about somebody else. And as long as you're focused on them, you're not looking at you. I don't know how many times, Andy's talked about what happened to him, but I don't know how many times that I have begun to say things about other people and then I realize I'm not perfect either. So many times I see things in other people and then I look at me and I see the same thing. If you're not doing that, you're not growing, and you're certainly not mature. You have to take responsibility, first of all, for your thinking, for your words, amen, for your uh, actions. Are you listening to me? You don't repeat something when you don't know it's true. You ever heard this word before? Investigate. You hear something on somebody, go to that if it's necessary. Uh, now, if it doesn't affect you, if it just, a lot of things I hear about people, it just goes in one ear and out the other. I don't pay a bit of attention in the world because I know the person that's doing the talking. Amen. And they're not in a position, they're not mature enough for me to even listen to. But then there are others that I'm in relationship to with it, uh, on some level. And when I hear it, then before I accept it, right. hello, right. I need to investigate it and find out if it's true. Mm -hmm. When you are gossiping, you are ministering condemnation. And you're basically saying, these people need to change, but uh, I don't. James 3, 5 says this, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, 
We're talking about speech here. We're talking about how we talk. We're talking about what we say. You can locate a person's spiritual maturity by what comes out of their mouth. He said, if any man offend not in word, the same man is a perfect or mature or complete man and able also to bridle his whole body. He says, if you can bridle your tongue, amen, you can bridle your whole body. The cravings, the desires, the temptations. Amen. If you offend not in word, if you, if you say the right things consistently, then you can, you, I, I, well, I won't say that. Y'all know who I was talking about. But somebody, some people just, I mean, I've seen people, they just knew one scripture. And they just repeated it over and over and over and over. And they was, it, was, it was about unity. And they was about the, the least unified person you could think of. Amen out there. I've, I've seen, I've seen, I've, I've had minister friends that didn't believe in women preachers. Yeah. Uh, that was their favorite, that was their favorite scripture. That was their favorite, um, I don't know how to say that. But anyway, that was that was their that was what they considered to be the truth, and they uh, really lived by that. So they wouldn't listen. I've had them right here. They finally left. They would not listen to a woman minister. Amen. Because of a misinterpretation of the word. Okay. Um, so another person I'm thinking about. And they are absolutely, two or three of these actually I've run up on, they, uh, they think the name of Jesus. Everything is the name of Jesus. You baptize in the name of Jesus. Everything is in the name, in the name, in the name. They've taken it. They don't believe in the Trinity. They just believe in Jesus. It's all about the name. We call them Jesus only. Hello? Uh, but that's that's their favorite thing, and really, they, unless you unless you've been baptized in the name of Jesus, I asked one of them. I said, "Wait a minute, Hoss. You remember you mean, you mean I've been born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. I preached the word, and operate in the gifts of the Spirit, and did this, that, and the other, and I'm still not going to heaven because I hadn't been baptized in the name of Jesus. That's right. I'm going to hell." What I'm saying is that there are people that they got their, their, their special scriptures that they want to dump on everybody. Amen. And, and, and I want to ask them sometimes, is there any, well, I have asked them, is there any other scripture in the Bible or any other truth that you believe is as strong as you do this? Why don't you feel the same way about the whole Bible instead of just one thing? Oh, Apostle David. Does your words edify, that is to build up, or do they tear down? Yeah. Have you ever been around anybody and, you, and, and, and you've been in a conversation with them and then you go away and you feel like you need to take a bath? <laughs> you just feel so much guilt and condemnation and just, I mean, they just make you feel small. Hello? A lot of, a lot of preaching, a lot of message does that. People walk out under condemnation and guilt. Because somebody's beat them up mm -hmm, with a bunch of religion. And you have to ask yourself when you're, when you're speaking to someone or if you're listening to someone, does it minister edification or, or condemnation? Faith or doubt? You can, you can find out. You can know by a person's words and their, and their actions if they're in faith or in doubt. Fear or peace? You know, some people, you can see it on their face. Uh, they've been so sad for so many years. They've had so much worry, so much peace, that it just it has caused their, their, their countenance. And you can just look at them. You know, this is a worried, tormented person right here. But then you can look at somebody else and you say, boy, they're full of life. As a matter of fact, I, sometimes, a lot of times, I'll be in the cash, at the cash register checking out. And I can see in, in the face of, and I say, 
you're born again, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And then I can see I, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of deals before but I, the ones that worked in there. And then I, some of them you just you just know. You just know they're sad people. They worry about everything all the time. They think negative all the time. About they're expecting the worst all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can't, usually you can't help somebody like that. And so all you're going to do is they're going to pull you down. Now, if the, if the Lord leads you and he puts somebody in your life that can draw out of you that want to change, yeah, by all means you minister to them. Another thing I found out about gossip, and I found this out the hard way, when I came up in the first Pentecostal church, and like I said, Pentecostals are the worst people in the world about gossiping and talking about other people and putting other people down, fi fault finding. Matter of fact, some of them think they have the gift of discernment because they can see everybody's fault but theirs. There's not even a gift of discernment. There is a gift, there is a gift of discerning of spirits. Amen. That God didn't give you some special gift to where you uh, uh, you can judge everybody. But this is what I was going to say. When I first started off, there's so much gossip. I got involved in it. I was naturally I was naturally that way before I got saved. Uh, t thinking about people, talking about people, putting people down, gossiping about people. And what I found, well, after I become a Christian and I started hanging out with the wrong people in the church that were in just as bad a shape as I was or worse, then we had little meetings of gossiping. Hello? What is that, birds of a feather flock together? Uh-huh. Uh, cor corrupt communication, you know, uh, defiles good manners. So I remember you get started gossiping and talking about people. There was actually an anointing that came with it. Not from God, but an, a, a, a demonic anointing that would come along and help you to supposedly see things and say things and makes you look good. Yeah, man, I know this about so-and-so. Yeah, this all goes back to pride. Notice this, that whatever you sow, we're talking about words, and and words are... are, are uh, and, and seed go together. Uh, he calls the seed the word. The seed that you sow, good or bad, is going to produce a harvest. So if that be the case, you might ought to be careful about what you say. Now, people talk about leadership. The devil ministers to them and the people they're going to find the fault with is going to be leadership because they're the ones that God put over them to help them grow out of it. Amen. Amen. Uh, but leadership, you got to be willing to take and able to take rejection, mm -hmm. persecution. You better be ready. If you're in your leadership, you better be ready to be lied to and lied on. Amen. Because it's coming, my friend. Okay, because see, words paint pictures. And when you're speaking words about somebody, amen, you're painting a picture in somebody else's mind, and then that person begins to see that person that way. Hello? So the, the picture or the attitude or the, or the mindset of that person has been changed by words. Hello? The third thing. A spiritually mature person will give God all the glory for his grace. Everything. And I've had a revelation of this like I never have before. I would not be here today if it was not for the grace of God. Somebody prayed for me. God gave them the grace to pray. They, uh, God answered that prayer, and I was I had a that Damascus Road experience, and I surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. But it was by His grace. Uh, what happens is 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 this 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 kind of person, 
this mature person, um, does not depend on their ability. They understand that it's totally God's ability. You know, well, I prayed, I prayed, uh, I prayed a hundred hours in other tongues. Let me tell you something. God give you the grace for that. You can't pray without his grace. That is grace. What is it? His ability. His ability, not yours. What about the decisions, the good decisions that you've made? See, you can take all these things and beat people up with it. If you do what I, if you pray like I pray, you get the same report. Look, if you made decisions, the good decisions that you have made, it was by his grace. If I went, if I fasted, if I fasted days and weeks at a time, is it good? Yeah, all these things are good. But you have to understand it's by his grace. What about the anointing to fulfill your place? It was by his grace. You didn't earn it. Hello. You don't deserve it. In your ministry, everything you accomplish is by his grace. Paul said this, and I didn't know what he meant for years. But he said, I am what I am. By the grace of God. And he, he actually, he persecuted the church. And he stood by when others were killed. Stephen was, was martyred. Uh -huh. but, so God, it took God's grace. It took God's grace. Amen. Matter of fact, when Stephen was dying, he said, Lord, lay this sin, don't lay this sin to their charge. He actually, he actually was praying for Paul because Paul was the ringleader of the whole thing. And without that prayer, God gave him the grace to pray the prayer, but we would have never had an apostle Paul if it hadn't been for his prayer. Amen. Now the next thing is, and this is, this is, this is the last one. A mature person is one who understands walking in love. The more mature you are, the more love is going to flow out of you. Jesus said this in John 13, 35, By this all men shall know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. I've had people go out and talk about stuff. I mean, things that they perceived in the church. Much of it wasn't even true. But they'll go down to the center, the hairdresser. Hello. To other businesses and spread lies talking to the world about the church. Are you totally crazy you don't go out to the world. They're, they're looking for something. You are destroying that person by talking about church stuff. Whether you agree or, or don't agree. You don't go out and you, talk, you don't talk about what goes on in it. You don't talk about your leadership. Because all you're doing is you're feeding a spirit that's already in those people. You're just building them up. So the disciples love one another. What are we here for? To make disciples. To be transformed and make disciples. Which means that you're going to be transformed, first of all, in your love walk. It means that if you're walking in love, you're going to be able to work together. Everybody's got a different personality. Not everybody's like you. Not everybody came from where you came from. Not everybody thinks like you. Amen. Not everybody came from the same bloodline as you did. Mm -hmm. My mama used to tell me, don't judge a man till you, till you walked a mile in his shoes. You don't know what Jimmy Swaggart dealt with all those years. You don't know why he was the way he was. 
God did apparently because God kept using him. He was just an anointed and just used of God. The, the character problem caught, caught up with him. That's when everybody forsook him. God never did. Because God, God sees a person's heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. A person who's walking in love will stick with you and love you and restore you when you do fall, when you do sin, when you do miss it. Romans 5.5 5 says the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost so we have no, we, we have no excuse for not walking in love. Are you with me now? In 1 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians, you know this one. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 11, this is amplified. We're talking about love, charity in, in, in the uh, King James, but he's talking about the love of God, the love of God, not the love of flesh. Amen. Not the kind of love as I love you as long as you love me. I love you as long as you do what I want you to do. As long as you please me, I love you. No, God's, God's love is unconditional love. No, but he, he loves us. He loves you when you mess up. Amen. My, my children have done all kind of crazy, stupid things. They failed a lot of times. But, and, and I don't say that. I, I say that their sin was wrong, but at the same time, I still love them the same because they're still my children. So when you mess up, you've still got a father. Amen. He says here, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, that is the love of God, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and all, I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but I have not charity, I am nothing. He goes back to what we were saying earlier, you know. Uh, just because you've got gifts doesn't mean that your life is pleasing to God. He said, for though I bestow all my goods to the to poor, to, to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, that is the love of God, it profiteth me nothing. But the love of God suffers long. Yes, sir. Religion is so quick. Uh, to condemn people when they do miss it. And they, but charity, charity, the love of God, suffers long and is kind. And is kind. Paul said, be ye kind one to another. Mm-hmm. So you have no excuse to be ugly. Charity, that is the love of God, envies not. Well, it can't envy not because love wants the best for you, right. not for me. Love is about you. Love is not about me. Hello? It envieth not. It does not vaunt it itself up. It is not puffed up. That is, it's not full of pride. It does not behave itself unseemly. Mm-hmm. Seeketh not her own. There we go again. Love does not seek what I want. It's about what others need. Okay. It seeks not her own. It's not easily provoked and thinketh no evil. Mm -hmm. I don't live up to all this 100%, do you? No, uh-uh. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. How many times when a minister fails, especially because they had a big ministry, because they got people in the church that watch them all the time? Hello. Okay. Then when they fall, they rejoice in that iniquity. The love of God doesn't. But rejoices, oh, rejoices in the truth. It beareth all things, believeth all things, it hopes all things. It endures all things. The love of God never fails. Prophecies will fail. Um, 
tongues will fail. Mm -hmm. One of these days when we leave this life and we're with the Lord, we won't need to be prophesying or speaking in tongues or casting out devils. Or, amen. All these things are going to cease. And where there be knowledge, that the word of knowledge, it'll vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Come on, come on. But when I became a man or mature, I put away childish things. So it, when we come fully into the presence of God, there'll be no need for these gifts anymore. Because we will already know, we will see, and we will know as he knows. In Luke 6, 35, I know you're going to love this one. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. He says, love your enemies. You can tell what's in a person by how they handle the feeling for their enemies. Mm -hmm. Here again, I haven't always been there. I'm, there. I'm closer to there than I've ever been. Luke 6, 27, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Now, love gives and forgives. Love restores. Yes. Love defends. Yep. I've had people say things about me in the church, and I, most of the time, the people are hooked right up and go along with it. But thank God for those that won't. Because I've had some to say, wait a minute. I ain't listening to that. I even had a lady that was... Uh, uh, had left here and was started talking about to the her their had hairdresser and the hairdresser bless her heart she didn't even come to this church didn't know me she said that sounds like gossip to me <laughs> he he she shut her up amen. you can shut people up amen. amen so it defends people love defends yes, love suffers with people. The Bible says when one member suffers, all members suffer. When one rejoices, we all rejoice together. If we love, then guess what? We will pray for them. We will pray for them. And so, how are we going to, how are we going to grow? Well, it always goes back to this. You're going to have to feed on the Word of God. Not just what you can quote. Not what you just got in your head. Amen. Not, what you, you, not even what you study or what you hear. But it, the whole word, everything from Genesis to Revelation. You're going to have to accept the, whole, the word of God as it is by faith, whether you understand it or not. The second way that you're going to grow and mature is you're going to have to Spend time that is fellowshipping with God and with the other members of the body. There is something in the rest of the body that you need. Every part of my body needs the blood flow. It flows in every part of my body. It's in the hand. It's in the arm. It's in the feet. Amen. So the way our... The way our love is going to be manifested is not just when we fellowship with God. When you fellowship with somebody, you take on their characteristics. You become more like them. Mm -hmm. And there's some things in all of us that somebody or some of us need to draw out. Amen. Amen. So we need to spend time fellowshipping with God and with other members of the body. Somebody told me one time that, I'm going down in the woods. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stay down there a year. I got to find God. I said, you're going to mess up big time. You got to have fellowship. You got nobody to draw from down there. 
Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 got you don't have a body to hook up with. You can't be an arm or a leg or anything else. I was praying one night and I saw body parts. I saw hands. I saw feet. I saw all of these body parts just floating around. They were there, but they weren't hooked up. The love of God will hook you up. Amen. Amen. And then obedience. You have to be obedient to what God is telling you, what your conscience, what your conscience is telling you to do because it is the voice of your spirit. So, those are the things. You've got to accept the whole world, word as it is. Fellowship one with another because we all are designed by God to fit together. Right. Amen. Yeah. But if the hand refuses to be connected to the arm, yeah. you remember the vision the people had? You remember the vision where they were all a uh, big long table? And you got people on one side and people on the other but they did not have any elbows. So they got all this food, the most delicious food you could think of, but they couldn't eat it because they didn't have any elbows. They couldn't do this. So the revelation they received is this. I'll feed you. Hello? I'll feed you. I'll reach over to your plate, because I don't need to do this, I'll reach to your plate, take your food, and feed it to you. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. What well, Something happens. Something happens when we fit together. Something bad happens when we don't fit together. Right. Jesus said, no greater love has any man than he lay down his life for his friend. Your life is not about you. You are not designed to just be your part. You got to, You were designed to fit with the rest of the body. Did anybody get anything out of this today?